This is video number three in our series on the four kinds of chemical reactions. And we're continuing our discussion of oxidation reduction reactions. Remember, in oxidation reduction, electrons are moving. Here we're going to look at combustion and ion changing oxidation reduction reactions. We're going to look at the complete combustion of methane and oxygen to get carbon dioxide and water vapor, the incomplete combustion of methane in oxygen to form carbon monoxide and water vapor, a ion change where cerium-4 is reacting with concentrated hydrochloric acid to form cerium-3 and chlorine gas, and a fairly familiar reaction where silver ions, as in silver nitrate solution, react with a solid metal like magnesium to form silver metal and magnesium ions in aqueous solution. The first reaction needs us to begin with an assignment of oxidation numbers. It's convenient for us when we're working with molecular compounds to assign a kind of charge to covalently bonded atoms to see if they're being oxidized or reduced. So this is kind of an accounting trick that we use that's very effective. In short, we treat all oxygen atoms as if they were ions with a minus 2 charge, and all hydrogen atoms as if they were ions with a positive 1 charge. And we treat most metals according to their position on the periodic table so sodium would be plus 1, calcium would be plus 2, aluminum plus 3. For example, sodium is always plus 1, fluorine or fluoride is always minus 1. Let's look at our methane combustion. Methane burns in oxygen gas to form carbon dioxide gas and water vapor. Since the highest oxide of carbon is formed, we call this a complete combustion. Why is it an oxidation reduction? Well, we have to look at the oxidation numbers and see if they change. H is considered to be 1 plus, and oxygen 2 minus. So in methane, as you can see, there are four hydrogens, and 4 times plus 1 is plus 4. Carbon, then, must be minus 4, so that we reduce this total charge on the methane to zero. So carbon starts at a negative four. But if you look in carbon dioxide with two oxygens, each minus one, we're going to have to assign the carbon a plus four oxidation number. Therefore, this is an oxidation reduction because the carbon is changing its charge the oxygen is as well, because it starts off at zero and ends up as a negative two. All combustion reactions, then, are oxidation reduction reactions. Down deep, they are losing and gaining electrons. We look now at the methane reaction with oxygen to form carbon monoxide. This is called an incomplete combustion, because the highest oxide of carbon is not formed. When you balance this equation, you'll see that it doesn't require as much oxygen to make carbon monoxide as it does to make carbon dioxide. And this, of course, is producing a lethal gas, carbon monoxide. So you always need to keep your furnace tuned up so that it's providing adequate supply of oxygen to give you carbon dioxide. Why is this an oxidation reduction? We will again look at changing oxidation numbers the hydrogen at plus 1, the oxygen at minus 2. So in methane, we've got the four hydrogens. That's a 4 plus. So the carbon must again be negative 4. But in carbon monoxide, the carbon must be 2 plus because oxygen, as always, is 2 minus. And we need to keep the carbon monoxide neutral in charge. Therefore, electrons are being moved, and all combustion is once more oxidation reduction. <clears throat> the next type of reaction we have sees the cerium 4 plus ion 
changing to the cerium 3 plus ion. So this is a changing ion oxidation state. <coughs> it's really easy to see that for cerium 4 to become cerium 3, it has to gain an electron. If you're reducing its charge, you are reducing the cerium 4 to cerium 3. For chloride to become chlorine gas, we saw in an earlier video that the chloride has to lose an electron. So that is an oxidation reduction reaction. So that when you see an element changing its charge, you know you have an oxidation reduction reaction. Finally, we're going to look at something that in other places have been called replacements or displacement reactions. Our favorite, we take an active metal like magnesium or copper and we put it in a silver nitrate solution and we get silver solid silver and the ion of the active metal in this case magnesium 2 plus you saw this kind of reaction in the activity series lab for silver ions to become silver metal they have to gain electrons that's a reduction and for magnesium to become magnesium ions we've seen earlier it has to lose two electrons to the silver ions therefore when you see one element losing charge and another gaining charge or eliminating its charge, you must have an oxidation reduction reaction. One last point. Why is this not an ion swap, what we just looked at? Well, there are two reactants and two products, so some students get confused and think that this is an ion swap, but it's not. In an ion swap, both reactants and both products are ions in ionic compounds like HCl or silver nitrate. And both are in aqueous solution. Here, the two metals, magnesium and silver, are solid. They're not in solution. Of course, also in ion swaps, the charges are not changed. In this reaction, they are increased or reduced. And therefore, this is not an ion swap. It's an oxidation reduction.